Welcome to Film House, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel. I got James and Elise with me today. Hello. Hello. Um, this week's episode is sponsored by Robinhood. Robinhood strives to make financial services work for everyone. I'll tell you a little bit more about Robinhood and an offer they've got for you later on in the show. Um, but first, we all, the three of us, were the only people willing to go see Glass this past weekend. I people are willing, just um, haven't been willing to see it. I have been looking forward to it, and mm-hmm. of course was kind of disappointed. You were on the hype train? Topless. Oh, yeah. you just dropped it right away. No teaser. I think, people are going to click out of the podcast. I think the industry thought there was a hype, more of a hype train for it than there actually was. Maybe so. Mm-hmm. A, a self-created hype train? I think the ind- definitely the mm-hmm. insiders thought there was going to be more to it. I don't know. I think M. Night's back. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> I was about to be really surprised. Um, but yeah, I, 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 the reason I was actually excited about this movie is kind of the secret trilogy that it created at the end of Split. Uh-huh. Um, hopefully, we're talking about this movie. Uh, hopefully, you've seen Split and Unbreakable. Uh, if not, those are much better movies. Go and see them first. Um, but at the end of Split, there, there was a little teaser with David Dunn, Bruce Willis's character from Unbreakable, and kind of started tying these movies together. And we thought we were going to get this big epic conclusion in Glass. And I'm not yeah. sure if we did. I mean, there was a conclusion. And we should probably wait and try and do non-spoilers for a little while yeah. before talking about the end of this movie. Um, he's kind of known for his twists. Um, but it's also there's an end of a movie that we'd rather not spoil. But I think that's maybe the more interesting part of the movie to talk about. Yeah. Um, so you you weren't really into it, James? Did you like Glass? Uh, so I love Unbreakable. That's in my best movie, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think Sixth Sense is good too. But I just in, in uh, terms of its subject matter, I prefer Unbreakable. Yeah, I never, um, I didn't see the Sixth Sense until maybe a year or two after it came out, and I knew the end of it. Okay. And I didn't think there was a lot there in the movie when you knew the twist at the end. Bruce Willis is – I just like Bruce Willis a lot in in Sixth Sense. Back when he acted. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, which which he kind of sleeps through glass. Is really strange, which you can make arguments for it or whatever. But um, – and then Split was kind of like a surprise thing. Yeah. Because I don't – I haven't liked M. Night Shyamalan for a really long – longer than most people. Like even Signs, I was that watching – That was the end of it. I w- well, for some people love that movie yeah. and it's fine. But I was watching it going like, no, 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 no. I, d- I, don't, I don't care for this. And then, uh, and then the village was after that, and by the time that movie was out, I was hard off that, yeah. hard off that train. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so he's kind of been a joke for a really long time. And then Split just kind of like popped up, and people are like, "No, this is this movie Split is really yeah. good." Little also, movie, it came out of nowhere. Also, it's directed by M Night Shyamalan. You're like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." And then I saw Split, and I really liked it. Well, that uh, James McAvoy carried that film, and he yeah. probably carries this movie as well. I w- Absolutely, I would say, 100%. Yeah, for me. Split was interesting because M. Night Shyamalan was not a instrumental part of the marketing. He was not a focus of the marketing. Mm-hmm. And it was also a pivot t- for him to working with Blumhouse and mm-hmm. smaller budget than, you know, he was coming off the failures he had mm-hmm. been making. I don't know how it compared to, like, The Visit, but definitely Blumhouse micro budget. <laughs> the Visit was a movie I didn't even knew came out until, oh, I, was, really? <laughs> until I was on his IMDb oh, looking I at this. I watched it uh, a few years ago, and it's it's weird, but uh, but Split uh, felt more... It felt like it was a, a standalone movie that was opportunistic in its tie-in to this universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, it felt like it was a little bit of M. Night Shyamalan saying, so... Like, what do you think, guys? Like, because he didn't, he didn't need the Unbreakable. No, it was a little extra at the, at the end. end. My, my understanding is that the character Kevin was supposed to be in Unbreakable, mm-hmm. in the original idea for Unbreakable, and at some point got cut just yeah. for time and space in that movie. And he is an Unbreakable. That's a spoiler, though. Oh, oh, the... Um, which yeah. we shouldn't talk about yeah. if we're not in spoiler mode, but... Uh, Let's do as much as we can without yeah, spoilers for but, a few um, minutes here. I... Th- I think uh, in terms of this fulfilling the third film in, in a trilogy, it uh, it didn't succeed in doing what I hoped it would, which was really making these three characters come together and interact in an interesting way. And mm-hmm. I don't want to... Sp- I mean, I feel well, like I can't talk so, about yeah. th- like, that I'm in a... Sorry. No, so, no, 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 but... I mean, for me, fine. Unbreakable... Uh-huh. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I feel similarly. I, was, I thought this was going to be some great climax Mm -hmm. with these three characters coming together and they came together in a certain way that 
I mean, well, it was exciting while I was at the movie. Like, I was excited to see what these characters were doing and how they were coming together. But in the end, just didn't really do it for yeah. me at all. Yeah. It was, they brought them together, and then they were locked in this building for the whole movie, essentially. I'm such a junkie for, like, worlds colliding, characters. Mean, I mean, it's the, it's the thrill you get when you're watching Game of Thrones and somebody across the map finally makes it to someone else that yeah. you, you never thought would interact. Like, that's kind of the thrill I had watching this and going into it. But it didn't quite pay off enough, or not at least in an eloquent enough way, or it didn't, like, give us enough, I think. I, I think um, part of the reason, like, Unbreakable is so much fun because it's an unconventional take at a, super, uh, at a superhero movie where, the like, the antagonist is his lack of belief, right? <laughs> Like it's the fighting against what you think are is conventional, and but even though you know something's different and that you're different, like you're not, you refuse to accept that kind of thing, because there's no real big villain at the end of Unbreakable. Really, it's him. I mean, Glass himself. does something, but that's his evil act of. But like it, that's just like a, that's just like a part of what made the mo- the plot. It's not necessarily like he was he was They're trying not. to destroy him or he's not facing each other, you know. Um, go ahead. Oh, just there, I mean, they're not constantly at odds, I guess. No, it's no. just, it's a really Machiavellian, like, Thanos sort of well, twist that, I mean, they're, that they're glass pulls. They're not even odds at all. No, they, they were they, working they parallel. They treat him yeah. as his partner the yeah. whole time and then you find out, oh, wait, no, which is a great twist. Yeah. And then in a Split, twist. the Split thing is, I liked a lot because, and you couldn't have to, had Split come out two years after Unbreakable probably because you'd be like, this is the same movie. But since there was such a large gap of time, Split is almost the exact same type of journey for the main character, except that that's the villain side, right? Like the whole movie is coming to believe that he is something the whole greater movie than a regular is him person. Him talking with a psychiatrist, telling him that this thing is a figment; it's not real. Like it's you can you can you're not you're just doing things to compensate for these real life issues you're facing. Mm-hmm. You're, this is a compensation that you're 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 doing. Where it, and then in Split it's like no, no, he is special and he is unique, only he's the villain side. And you're like, "Oh shit, that's cool. That's like the same story again, but like that's really cool." My biggest problem with Glass as a whole is that then it gets the two characters together and it just does it again. Glass is 90% about them just sitting everyone down and then trying to tell them, oh, no, you're not actually super again. And I'm like, that doesn't work, one, because Split just came out, right? And then you got us all reminded about Unbreakable again. And why would we as the audience who twice now has seen this trick happen where the whole time we're thinking, is it, is it not? It has to be, it's got to be, how can we convince people? How's this person going to become themselves? Get to that catharsis. Why is it, why would you start it back over at yeah. one it, it's, for this it's, movie? It's been a giant chunk of the movie reversing the message of the other two movies and saying, "Hey, it's it's not real. It's just yeah. in your head. And it's she's, a it's, figment." It, it's a lot of her, uh, like monologuing at mm-hmm. them, which mm-hmm. gets really boring and really repetitive. And I, also, just to like the point of it reverses that message. I forget who, if it's like the New York Times or Variety. Somebody has a really interesting. Uh, article comparing s- comparing Glass and Last Action Hero okay. in that like what? Last Action Hero has a you know it's it's secondary character who is telling the the action hero like this is not possible yeah. none of this is instead of leaning into the fun of being like yeah this is crazy come to life I mean they yeah. do it in a much more uh, interesting way than I'm describing it now but their whole thing with like the Sarah Paulson character was like it's not fun for the audience just to like. We've gotten to the point, yes, just to have her constantly telling them, no, you're not superheroes, is a not really interesting way to go with it. Yeah. I actually did like Sarah Paulson for most of the movie. I think she's a pretty talented actress, although I think I stopped liking her for, you know, spoiler reasons, but also she did hit the same note over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I think in movies, you know, the viewer isn't stupid. I think sometimes you tell someone something once and they'll get it. When you repeat it for a third time, it's like, okay, I get it. This is what you want me to feel and think. Uh-huh. Instead of making me feel that way, you just repeat it three times. Well, I mean, uh, like, I think part of the problem, too, is that we've watched the other two movies. You're probably not in glass unless you've seen these other yeah. two movies, in which case you have all the evidence you need, right? Like, you're not 
you're not en entering this film with these two very strange people who are being kept in a prison or whatever. Like you, they show you even at the beginning of Glass, they show you superhuman activity. So for her to come in and constantly tell you the the audience that this isn't possible and make you it doesn't work. That magic trick of the plot doesn't work because you've you've seen it. You are you're already in a, a believer. It works in Unbreakable and I think it works even better in Split because you aren't sure. It's leading up to the possibility. Is it or is it just a crazy person? I don't know. Like um, and so the that that movie leans so hard into that being its hook it just it grinded it to it really made it feel like you're watching the first act of the movie yeah because like the trailer if you watch the trailer you're like oh this is going to be good because they're going to be in that insane asylum and then they and, but then uh glass is going to break him out to do some sort of glass stuff well and then and then <laughs> bruce willis is going to have to chase him and there's going to yeah. be some cool stuff happening except that i mean Honestly, most of the movie is the trailer. It's mm -hmm. in that insane well, asylum. And the movie starts with like the constant allusion and referral to Nakatomi Plaza, which we're gonna get to later. Uh, yeah. Okinawa. Okinawa. I don't know. I, don't Tower. Know what Tower. I keep in my head. I keep calling it Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> yeah. um, Actually, I did but, like the opening of the movie. Sorry to interrupt, uh, but but when they, they kind of started with uh, Bruce Willis hunting the beast, mm -hmm. and that might have been one of the more fun parts of the movie because it was like a gra super grounded superhero movie like this guy is kind of mm -hmm. special and he wants to help and he's you know searching for this kidnapper or killer and it was maybe you know the first 10 minutes of the movie but I, I yeah, thought it was quite the fun only, the, I think there was some bad decision making on the scope of it because the idea is they're establishing that David has this routine right so his routine is he goes for walks and he looks for crimes but the, fir the first crime you see him like handling is some asshole teenager oh, yeah, that, Superman punching a stranger in the street. That was fucking stupid. And you're like, that's what you thought of? Like, why not a mugger? Like, bat it's like why internet you, justice Batman or whatever. Just have like a mugger grab someone's purse yeah. and then he stops them in the alley or whatever. I, I feel like they were trying to be more creative and fun and hip than having a mugger. Yeah, what, but ended up being kind of lame with the yeah. whole Superman punch. What that, were you saying about Nakatomi Plaza? Uh, well, that's that's the movie sets it up, and I think I don't know if it thinks it, this is spoiler territory as well because uh, though you may be shocked to believe it, they never make it to the tower. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, M Night, like you know, I'm not surprised that he set up this big thing and didn't like execute on it, but it it makes and I don't know if the movie thinks it's smart for making you think that it's going to go there for setting it up to think okay yeah we're gonna this is gonna culminate in this big battle he but then it doesn't smart. I mean it's it's a movie that was made with 20 million dollars so of his money of, yeah his own money which I think is pretty cool that, it, it is cool I mean I, I hope it's something that it's his choice not necessarily that studios won't fund his movies but more he's in the business of making movies that make money well, somehow. Yeah. I think it's I think it's the agreement was he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. He just has to For deliver a movie mm -hmm. and they'll pay him back his 20 million dollars. Well, yeah. In, in the over the weekend it made 100 uh, million on a budget rich. of 20. Yeah. So he's it rich. it did all right. Yeah. Um and I you know the more I think about this movie maybe the less I like it. Like when I was trying to analyze it maybe for talking points for this I started liking it a little bit less, but when I walked out of the theater on Monday, I enjoyed the movie. Um, it wasn't nearly as good as Unbreakable or even Split, but still kind of dug it. Um, mm -hmm. I was happy to see you know those characters finally come together. And maybe we can, from here on, we can just do spoilers. So anybody watching that doesn't want anything else spoiled about the film, um, maybe click to the end. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. or or why don't you put the time on screen? Oh, yeah, I'll where we will, yeah, where somewhere. we will stop be talking, talking about spoilers, which might be never. We'll see. Come here, um, but um, yeah. So yeah, spoiler territory. I mean, I there's just certain parts like Sarah Paulson's a good actress, but like you said, the things she says and the things she does are just dumb. Like well, there's the the moment at the end when she is conveniently in the right place to touch David Dunn while he's being drowned, essentially. Yeah. So so the audience gets the one few seconds to explain what she's been doing the whole time. Well, you said you kind of liked what they did with the ending. For me, it felt like a real shit on my face. Oh god, I don't I don't know. I I liked it because it was because it wasn't anything I expected. Essentially, it like. 
Yeah. It subverted my expectations, but it was definitely shitting on anybody that was excited to go see this movie to see these characters. To just kill them at the end of the movie is just, I don't know, it's, I, it's bad storytelling. I could I see why you might think, where can these characters go from here? How can these characters salvage anything of of who they are? I could to- I could totally see that. Like mm-hmm. Bruce Willis, like for what you will say about him, he's he's like a vigilante who is still mourning the loss of his wife. He doesn't really. I mean, he's got his son, but other than that, he's just. Mm-hmm. Did she kind die in Unbreakable, or was that just something that she, happened off screen? It must have been off screen. I think it was just something that happened off screen because the actress didn't want to come. Um, <laughs> but like, I I don't know. They, they didn't do a whole lot with Bruce Willis in this mm-hmm. movie. It he felt also like, didn't do much. Like he yeah, s- seemed like he was sleeping. It for felt most like they the had him for a handful of days, and they went, "We need to maximize Bruce. Get him in as much as possible." But there was no real like. You wanted to see Bruce Willis and Glass sit down and have a conversation mm-hmm. together. Well, those are the two characters that had meat together. Yeah. Like one created the other. And you didn't get to see that. You wanted to see really, like Glass and James McAvoy kind of have their moment a little bit. Mm-hmm. But you kind of wanted to see them get into each other's psyches a little bit more. You wanted, I, I don't know, You we didn't really get any of that uh relief on any any of those interactions that that should have been what the movie's about because for me like the movie's not about whatever twist or, or big um, secret society he's going to have that's pulling the strings on oh. this which I, I knew from the headlines that were coming out I'm like oh god he did some big bullshit twist again <laughs> the clover um, people but they're coming for you it was, superheroes to me it was supposed to be a movie about like of this character study of these three people that are intertwined mm-hmm. um Primarily, like, they called the movie Glass. Samuel L. Jackson was literally comatose yeah. for the first hour of the film. He doesn't become coherent until, uh, yeah, tr- the second, halfway through the second yeah. act. Yeah, a pretty big waste. Yeah. Pretty big waste. Uh-huh. And I get that, you know, well, he's the architect of everything. Even when you think at the end that maybe he slipped up and he wasn't the architect of uh, and the design of this, oh, no, he has one last, like, trick in his bag. Mm-hmm. Um they did get me but, with that one reversal they did of his where you thought Sarah Paulson caught him out of his cell, but he actually had gone through, messed with the machine, then gone and dilly-dallied and recorded that. It was like a kind of a double reverse. I don't know. Well, except, was, yeah. I don't know. For me, it was weird because he, 90% of the movie, he's just a drooling husk. And then why? it's clear that he's why? not. It's clear that he's not. And then the next scene... She grabs him out of bed and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, this is even in a state of him in greater coherence than he has been for the rest of it. Like you would, does he get into bed? Does I mean, he climb that, into I, bed? I like that same question because like, he's in his wheelchair, not able to move, but does, yeah, does he go yeah. to sleep? I can is tell able to you do why that? he's a drooling husk. I mean, because M. Night wanted it to build to these, these three men, their powers are crippled in whatever situation they're in. Bruce Willis, he's got a water tank attached to his room. That's his strength is gone. James McAvoy, he's got the lights. He can't, uh, mm. he can't uh, um, like summon his personalities. Oh, his brain is his superpower? Well, we're going to make yeah, him a vegetable. Him yeah. um, but, then, but it was uninteresting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it didn't matter. So those rooms, the water thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I remember... They kind of, in Unbreakable, they did a little bit of that. This is his weakness because he can drown. He needs to breathe. But did they have it so when he touched water, he was weaker? I don't think so. Because that seems to be what Glass it, was saying. I mean, is that just, when he's touching water, he loses Glass some of his power. Glass pushes trauma, right? Its whole message is that, like, trauma can can make you, you. Well, I think it's kind of has a has a... Uh, hurt, a harmful message of trauma can make you stronger because I don't think that just like that's an excuse for people inflicting traumatic experience on each other where it's like oh well mm-hmm. you know well she came out stronger because James McAvoy uh, abducted her she was able to uh, you know get her real uh, uh, her, her regular her, harasser her, her, her <laughs> uncle behind bars I don't her think that user. I wasn't really crazy about because uh, he still did capture her and try to eat her, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, like, he's a good person. Like, yeah, uh, like I mean, <laughs> no, I totally, I totally get that he was a victim of abuse and he himself was a victim of trauma. But I sort that doesn't of, excuse eating people. I sort of didn't like the like that she was really 
that excusable about it. Um, I get that she was she could identify that mm -hmm. because she herself was a victim of it. But yeah. so those rooms, so, so the water was that like a retcon that it made him weaker? It, yeah, it seemed like it was like oh no, it's just like water kills him. He but it looks was like, at it and it yeah, like or like he gets the slightest bit wet because again, spoiler, spoiler, he dies in a puddle of water. It's such a fuck you. A puddle of water on the ground. Just a tiny little bit and he dies when some unnamed soldier just holds yeah. him down in it. And All you see is the guy's hand. And he just flops around like that. Like it's such an unceremonious and it only makes sense if the implication is that his strength is gone once he is wet. But it also doesn't make any sense because 90% of the time he's in the rain. Yeah. I don't like it. It is a very weird thing where they were like, "Oh no, it's like weaknesses." And it's like well, every hero has to have their kryptonite. So what's his? Now it's water, but it never mattered before. It should be trains, <laughs> really. <laughs> and it's rooted in some sort of childhood trauma that you had, I guess. Yes. Yeah. that's that's the movie to me trying to be deep and talk about psychological issues and, and traumas and then not really I, being... To me, it feels like getting to a point in the script and realizing you don't know how to like ensnare your protagonist, so then you just create something on the page. You go, yeah. oh, well, the water... You no, know, it's like water, water. Any There's a bad. big pothole. It's, it's like a big one piece pothole. where like salt water just in your hand can just remove your powers or whatever. Like, So, mm. but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird. There are... Just not to shit all over it, James McAvoy is great. He's fucking awesome. In this movie. And I felt bad that he, like, had to give so much he's to this one. He's his ass off. Because he, like, it. if you, I, I would say that if you saw Split and you enjoyed James McAvoy's performance, it's probably worth seeing Glass just yeah. because you get even more of it and he will carry your attention. There, there's two particular scenes when they, they have that flashing light thing that changes his personality, which some review I said pointed out, why don't you just like close his eyes or something? Yeah, you could cover anyway, your eyes. But there, there's two scenes. There's one where the orderly's like flashing them, trying mm -hmm. to get the kid to come out. And there's one where Glass is trying to dismantle them and they're just flashing constantly. But McAvoy, is, he's just fucking incredible. Yeah. Like switching from character to character. character like yeah. I know there's movie magic involved with cuts and things, but... It was a serious performance. Oh yeah, he's he's really great, and like, it's pretty amazing how when he does change, like there are moments where he's like goes from evil version to like one of the ones who's more neutral or even yeah. kind, and you're like, oh, like <laughs> like you yeah. feel bad for him, and then he goes evil again, and then you don't feel bad again, and like so he's the best thing to come out of this movie far Absolutely. and away. Uh, I think Samuel L. Jackson is good, but again, he in the is, little bit of movie, that he, he's in. he is not he's not utilized at all in this movie. And then his he's everyone's everyone's killed unceremoniously in the most boring shit yeah. way possible. So the the way he gets shot in the belly, just in the belly, he just gets shot in the stomach, which Betrayed. is weird because <laughs> he was hit with a shotgun and split. But they explain to you that the shotgun was old and the shells were red. Which is only makes sense if you believe her, which you can't believe her because well, you sure. saw the movie, so you don't believe her. Yeah. So like, but, uh, I mean, well, the girl was also touching him, so maybe he lost the beast when he got. He shot. lost beast's bulletproof power or whatever it was, yeah. but it still seems to reason that like, okay, well, he could turn into. Well, it's, and it's probably, just I mean, it's lame. The He's, internal logic is a little. He weird. died of a broken heart because she betrayed him. <gasps> She didn't mean to though. It wasn't her intention no, I to thought, betray him. I thought she was like, "You got to go calm him down." But then she didn't. Realize no, they were I interpreted kill him. it as that she was. They told her to go out there and we didn't see it was happened off camera or off screen, but we were told that she was, or we were to assume that she was told to turn him so they could I mean, get a shot. Which, I didn't, uh, which, I didn't get which, which to get at a the shot time then. for me watching it. I thought it was really strange that they would put her in the line of danger. Why are there no people working in this hospital? Why are there three people working there's in one this dude. hospital? Yeah, the security's yeah. pretty times. weak. Yeah, there's one dude who comes in during the night shift, but he's also sometimes there on the day shift. And, Again, internal logic. And they, he's the only person who has to make sure these people don't get out of their cages when literally all the time they're getting out of their cages. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, so... James McAvoy gets shot in the belly, dies. Uh, Bruce Willis drowns in a puddle of water. And then <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson falls out of his wheelchair, <laughs> yes. well, which I induces like enough energy for him, him to die. Yeah, the beast punched him. Yeah, but. I know. But it's still just such a, it's such a, like a, a weak 
He's very thing. weak. Yeah, I know, but it's still weak. Also, another weird thing about this movie is that they try and remind you of things that happened in Glass by showing the actual Wait, Unbreakable. Or sorry, Unbreakable. Oh, yeah, the, uh, by showing deleted the actual scenes from Unbreakable. footage of the movie. And it's so jarring because the cinematography is completely different. Mm-hmm. And some of the scenes are gone for a really long time. And you're not, you're like, am I just rewatching this like again? Um, and then at the end, you're like, I don't, I feel like you implied that before you showed it to me. Um, there, yeah, it's really weird. And I really wanted to like this movie. I, I was wanted it to be great. Really excited for it. I, do, I wouldn't. It's getting ripped apart a it lot is. on like Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know. I think there's redeeming things about it. But James I, McAvoy should be nominated for every possible acting award <laughs> for this movie. <laughs> he ha, was he nominated will. for it's, anything for Split? No, I don't think I don't so. Think so. Look it up. He never. It's but it's a shame. But it, it's a testament to James McAvoy's talents. He he is the only one who really salvages this movie. The kid who they brought back, who is now a kind of a grown man, Bruce Willis's son. Yeah, yeah. His face was distracting. He, his lines are all terrible, but he clearly is not the actor that James McAvoy is. Okay. Uh, Samuel Jackson's mom, everything way- she says is terrible. Yeah, the makeup's really strange, too. Sarah Paulson is a great actress. I, I've i seen her, her ability to be an amazing actress, and sometimes you're like, oof, boy, she was trying, but she could not. Well, first of all, you guys were wrong. What? He was nominated for a Teen Choice Award for uh-huh. Choice Movie Villain <laughs> for Split. All right, movie great. Choice okay. Movie Villain choice is an movie award. Villain. Um, there, teen Choice. There's a lot of points in this movie where, like, it should flash on screen. You know, if you're watching a uh, an American Airlines thing, occasionally it'll show it just so that Property, way they have a watermark yeah. on it. It, sh- it occasionally it should pop up and say this movie was made for only twenty million dollars, <laughs> like cash. I mean that like, does put it in perspective. Uh, tw- yeah, but so you shouldn't make this kind. If you shouldn't go for something grander, you shouldn't promise Nakatomi Plaza at the end <laughs> if you know you only have twenty million dollars. I truly think they thought that was a smart thing of like the audience is going to think we're going there, and we will go there. We will go there, but we will go there when our truth is illuminated on the sides of the tower. That will be our culmination yeah. of the tower. And it's like, no, I want to see them fight on top of the tower. I want to see the beast climb the tower. <laughs> yeah. You wanted to see the beast do running on the side keep, of the tower. They keep hitting it <laughs> yeah. that you're like, you're like, oh no, there's no way. You're like, you're watching, you're like, there's no way they're going to have a tower fight. It would have been a shot of that in the trailer. I want to see But that's, then that's yeah. happening in the movie and then you're like, and then he's like, there's literally a point where he beats up Bruce Willis and he goes, now, to the tower. Again. <laughs> and you're like, how much is... I guess they're yeah. going to the tower, and then he. But then he doesn't make it to the I tower. I want to see Bruce Willis lift that tower out of its foundations <laughs> yeah. and glass fall from its highest highest precipice. Okay, yeah. and then he just shatters into a million yeah. pieces when he hits the yeah. bottom. Um, Real quick, um, I want to tell you guys about Robin Hood. Robin Hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission free. They strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. This app is a non-intimidating way for stock market newcomers like myself to invest for the first time with true confidence. The app has a clear design that is simple and intuitive with data presented in an easy to digest way. Other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, but Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees, trade stocks, and keep all your profits. The app has a brilliant design, which makes it simple to use. There are easy to understand charts and market data to help you place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. Through Robinhood, I am learning by doing. I'm learning how to invest as I build my portfolio. Getting your hands dirty is the best way to gain knowledge. Robinhood is giving our listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. So sign up at filmhouse.robinhood.com. That's filmhouse.robinhood.com and get your free stock. So thank you, Robinhood, for sponsoring uh, this episode of Filmhouse where we got to talk about glass. And I feel like we're shitting on it a lot, but I still think it's maybe worth like a rental or a plane movie. I wouldn't necessarily run out to the theaters uh, to see this just because it didn't live up to what I was hoping it would be. But I did really l- love Unbreakable and Split surprised the hell out of me. So, I don't know, I was I was happy to see them all come together, but they stuck them in separate rooms in that fucking asylum and then made it the Sarah Paulson movie, mm-hmm. which, can anyone, I can't remember her character's name. No. Anyway, it, it became her movie Dr. for a certain point. And the whole thing was called Glass, and he's not even in it until the last maybe 40 I, minutes. I And I'll say this. Sometimes you're, like, watching it, and you're like, well, this is what it should have been, which is easy to do when you don't have to sit down and write the script and make that movie. Yeah. But the whole time I was like, I was like, oh, well, 
she must be a superhero. Or like, if, yeah. if this movie's so centered on her, she must be like them too. At some point I thought right? she was going to have psychic powers And I was or like, something. oh, and there was even a point where I was like, oh, she has the power of influence. Mm-hmm. Because she says really dumb shit and everyone goes, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Like everyone believes it. She goes like, oh, well, <laughs> did you even lift that weight? And it's like... Yeah, he did. But he goes, he goes, maybe I didn't lift the weight. And I'm like, oh, maybe her superpower is that. There's also a point where the son goes to a comic book store and finds a comic book called The Whisperer. What was that? That's what made me think. And I was like, I was like, oh, she must be the comic book equivalent. She must be the real life equivalent of this comic book, The Whisperer. And he had an aha moment and he was like, oh my God. I thought he was going to come back and be like, you're The Whisperer. I I was really No, I'm not. And he goes, no, you're not. And I was like, oh, okay. But that's, it doesn't. Do that. Well, Instead, she's part of a much lamer plot line, which is a secret society <laughs> the Clover designed Kids. to keep people from being superheroes by not killing them. And they yeah. have really complicated means of meeting in restaurants. When yeah. I saw that, I thought, oh my God, did M. Night do the impossible and team up for a movie in the With Cloverfield, Cloverfield universe? Yeah. universe? And then it's going to be like, <laughs> surprise! M. Night thought, yeah. thought you can a surprise franchise you. franchise know. cross. That would be great. It's yeah. it's also real subtle, too, when they first establish that clover thing because a guy comes out with a gun and then the camera pans down the barrel of the gun to his wrist where the clover tattoo is and then it sits there for what feels like half an hour before then it continues before then it continues <laughs> moving on and then it shows another guy and immediately shows their clover. I'm like, shouldn't, you, shouldn't that be something you observe at the mm-hmm. beginning? You'd see her put something down, notice she has a clover yeah. tattoo, and then at the end, the soldier also does, and then you're that's how you've set it up and then yeah. paid it off. Yeah, maybe that shot was there, just cut out. Just I don't know, Secret jarring. Society shouldn't tattoo its members either. That's a good point. I mean, uh, I know you have to do that for do. the film. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say something interesting about this, the uh, genesis of these movies, and I think, I think it's this franchise, because Unbreakable is owned by Universal, right? I think uh, it was Disney. I don't know. We I have should no look idea. up who, because I definitely, I think it was, I think it was these movies where he got permission mm-hmm. to to oh. forge them. Though it was different, um, different, uh, um, not stupid, companies. not production. In Buena companies. Vista, whoever owns that now? Different distributors. Disney Touchstone. Didn't Disney buy I, th- I think it was Disney having to agree with Universal to yeah. let a movie share characters, which is pretty unprecedented. Uh, yeah, I th- I, so I was like, that's kind of cool that, mm-hmm. you know, we see. I, I always like when you see that yeah. happen. Yeah. A bunch of extremely rich mm-hmm. corporate <laughs> entities going, yes, we will make you more money. May do art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the third act, very unsatisfying. And his M. Night's patented twist was this secret society that was trying to keep the news of superheroes well, out no, of the world super- and then deal with them in a in a pleasant S- way superheroes so exist killing them? and C- mr glass was right comic books are human beings ways of com- coping with the knowledge that superheroes exist by telling stories but those are actually just kind of like you know tales that are true but have been created into this modern mythology, but it's because there are superheroes, but the society exists to suppress that, but they also don't just burn a bunch of comic books. And or, or just kill these people. Well, normally they do. I think the implication is that normally they do, but Sarah Paulson was trying to humanely Convince disrupt that, that by using psychology and just suppressing their their belief that they are a superhero, and then they'll just go back to being a regular person again. And so she was trying to be like the humane version of this society, and this was her experiment. But that's why they only gave her three days to try it, and then they were going to kill them anyway. A weird rushed timeline. It was, yeah. Just for the sake of the movie, yeah. having a time clock. Um, I, th- I think it's a real shame that we won't get James McAvoy doing this anymore. We just need to get him in more stuff. I've been saying that since Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I said we need Not more the last McAvoy. king of Scotland? No. Atonement? I think last king of Scotland was after I was definitely it. was. Yeah. So yeah, I was on board with that movie. But uh, he really he's is a us. he's incredible in this movie, and to just shoot him in the belly at the end. Yeah, not even like after the credits, have him wake up out of the grave or something. I mean, it could be the kind of thing where that Bruce Willis and James McAvoy were like, yeah, 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 we'll do it. But well, it, it's cool. But like, we're not trying to get into it. like a Captain America eight movie deal yeah. kind of thing here. So if this takes off, we don't want to keep keep coming back again and again. 
or be obligated to come back again and again. I could see that as a possibility too. These are all kinds of behind the scenes things that you would have to face while you're writing the script for Glass. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I think if you liked Split and you like James McAvoy, you should go see it. Yeah. But if you cherish Unbreakable and you're hoping for this to set off a trend of alternative superhero movies that are based on original IPs and with a different edge to them, you're not going to get it in Glass, unfortunately. Well, so the comic book in Glass, could, huh. that could even be the Beast. Yeah. Right? Well, that's what Elise was saying, right? Yeah. Like Jaguaro? Mm-hmm. I wasn't. Who D- Dan was saying? Uh, you were saying that Kevin was a character that was cut from the first oh, one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that that's setting well, it up right s- there. But, I mean, they do the big reveal that he was the kid at the train station. Well, yeah. But I'm saying, like, in terms of it even Which, being set up in Unbreakable, yeah. that comic book is from the shot in Unbreakable when mis- young yeah. Mr. Glass is, like, reading books that influence him, right? The, I remember when Split came out and people were um, theorizing that he was the kid from Unbreakable. People mm. were – and then the the – uh, response to that was well the timing wouldn't, the timeline wouldn't work out oh really yeah hmm. but it did <laughs> sure uh, uh, I mean Samuel L. Jackson did have a few laughable it. lines that like when uh, who was it was that was telling Kevin that Glass was responsible for the plane crash he's like no he's not supposed to know this now oh yeah <laughs> well, remember what he said first name Mr. last name Glass, Glass. That's like, oh, I uh, love it uh, I love him and then of course how does he kill that guard oh he gets the glass from the picture frame yeah. His signature weapon. He's like, my <laughs> power is my brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In sharp glass. I actually thought like his, his little carnival ride story was pretty sad. <laughs> I, I it was it waffled that, between sad and funny. For but that's me. just a deleted scene from Unbreakable. Yeah. Was it? I'm pretty sure. I, I've seen that before. I have the DVD. I I think that's just a cut sequence. It yeah. seems from familiar. Unbreakable. But I just thought they were doing something similar. No, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Did that's on the DVD. Did he put those stuffed animals next to him thinking that would, like, protect yeah. him yeah. from being yeah. hurt? That, that kid's fucking dumb. He, he was not smart when he was a kid. Yeah. Samuel Jackson is 70 years old. Look that's how crazy. good he looks. Look great. how good he looks. He does. He the woman great. that played his mother in this movie is, like, f- apparently five years younger than him in real life. Well, that must be fun for her. <laughs> <laughs> they needed that shitty makeup to make her look old. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of weird to have the sidekicks be, like, at the end, kind of had the so the final like, hey, we're gonna do an email blast to the world and show them the truth. Your dad's dead. And we're gonna go <laughs> sit in. The, yeah, we're gonna go sit in this train station yeah. where it all started. The two young people kind of made sense because they set up earlier that they go to the same school. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh well, if they find each other and they're like, oh, and then they can, I don't know, maybe they have powers too. I don't know. The Ex- movie's really yeah. weird about what it implies about how many people have powers and how many people don't. But I was like, oh, okay, then they're going to do something. But adding in <laughs> the not that old woman in old woman <laughs> makeup with them is like, makes it incredibly well, weird. I feel like they also sometimes even hint that she's like perfectly okay with all the evil terrible stuff they he did yeah. because so he's magnificent after, yeah after we saw it i was like she's very forgiving of her son's pretty mm. horrible deeds terrorist yeah. attack essentially yeah um it was, so also at the beginning does david dunn go around killing people that do internet pranks i think he just beats them up real bad okay because they cut away from that after yeah he um, scares them real good if you beats Superman them up a punch bit. some rando on the street <laughs> He might find you if you happen to walk into him on the street, and then he's going to go to your house and then beat you up. Um, I thought the action the, – there were a couple action scenes, like where they're, where David Dunn is fighting the beast, and they were kind of awkward and hard to follow. Like it, it, we've regressed a little bit in our action filmmaking back to cameras doing this so you can barely see what's happening. It felt inexpensive. It there felt like go. the first part of a fight that then would suppo- is supposed to break off into something more. So it's a lot of pushing, shoving, yeah. and throwing pushing, a table back and right? forth. Like and that's in that mo- in the f- opening when they're fighting, he like throws a table. So he throws a table back at him, and you're like, oh, okay, this is how the fight starts. And then it's really going to get going. But every single time, it just be uh, it just be the beast grabbing him, grabbing someone from behind, Squeeze. and squeezing. And I'm like, well, that's lame. That's that's the boring part of a fight when some dude's got another dude in the headlock. And then this, they collide with each other, but then they just push. He just pushes one guy into a car, and then the other guy gets pushed into the car, and that's their whole fight. And you're like, that's 
that's the boring part. <laughs> that's not a good fight narrative if you if you want to have it. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. the movie's implying that she might have some powers for the know. possible fourth movie? I don't know. I, th- I mean it's vague. Yeah. I yeah, don't know. The movie's saying that their non-powers are their powers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> their ability to email is their yeah. superpower. I don't their their being shoehorned into this movie is kind of what makes that unclear. I you know what I, I thought the most realistic part of this movie was mm. Samuel Jackson's mother's computer setup. Where she's got the old iMac, <laughs> and it's like it's like not in like a proper computer desk. It's just like on her dining room table. And I was like, that is mm-hmm. exactly how an old person <laughs> would have their computer. I, so this was one of their examples of what they were streaming to the world to yeah. prove that superheroes exist. Okay, so I have a problem because like this is this is the deep fakes that you see doctored on yeah. Facebook yeah. now. Like it, like this movie's a little late. It also seemed like he was really had a hard time with yeah. It. <laughs> you know, like I was watching it going like. Wouldn't you want him to do something impressive? Exactly. Those are old zoo bars. How can you? He can't bend those. <laughs> the, only, yeah, the only thing any of these characters can do is old bend old zoo bend bars. Old zoo Glass bars. can bend those old zoo it bars. Was, it was Did just they some have weird decisions. wood here so he could walk through the, In the grass mud. and not get muddy? Yeah. It was a little dated. I'm supposed to take that away when you do oh, the overhead no. shot. No, I mean, no. That's for all the people that have to, the workers. Yeah. That put three stuff guys in this that, The three security unit? guys that work at that insane asylum. That's how they get stuff in the container. Oh, okay. It, it, it's just, it was really weird that they were like, we're going to show the world. And it's like, that's the stuff that you see like a, mm-hmm. you know, 15 year old for a crass project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like those videos. Uh, I don't know. Did you watch that floor routine? That that UCLA oh gymnast. My gosh, she was so nuts. good. Superhero. Like I mean, if I, I saw that, I'd be like, wow, that's way more impressive than him almost bending that bar. Yeah, I don't know. Also, I I can't not mention the overly long, <laughs> with no point and awkward, uh, M Night Shyamalan cameo. Oh cameo at the beginning where I'm like, Ugh, oh, this is so self indulgent. Is this gonna leave? He's not a good actor. No. Hey. <laughs> Do you, do you work at the stadium 14 years ago? Because I remember every person I see at a yeah, sporting yeah. event half my life ago. He's, he's like convinced that the plot hole that his cameo creates is going to make people be like, there's a there's something wrong in this movie. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. This is a plot hole. But yeah. no one cares about your character. Where's the in the night. I didn't need, I had, couldn't even recall. Let your dad go on a walk. Yeah. I so know. pointless. Let's see. That that I just felt like that. That was when I started getting worried. Honestly, I watched most <laughs> really? of the movie and I oh, I saw that and I was like, uh oh. I will, I will say that it took way too long. But this scene when they're in the room together, this was cool. Mm-hmm. This was a neat scene when you finally get the three characters together. Should have. But this was at almost the end of the it film. Should have been the arrest. They they capture the two guys, take them to this. A meet, hard cut to this yeah. scene, and then we go from there. I, I could have done like weeks of therapy in this room instead of it being like the culminating yeah. therapy yeah. day or I, whatever. I thought the color palette for all of them was really cool in the movie, how mm-hmm. they were all represented. Yeah. That was neat. Yeah. Blue, yellow, purple. Purple. Herp. What, well, purple green, purple, green, purple, and yellow. Blues. Yellows. <laughs> Blues I do yellows think they could have given like the beast some new pants because he was wearing the same pants that he got abducted in his for joggers. like half the movie. What? He likes, he likes his joggers. I like those joggers. I know. I don't know. James McAvoy's great. He's fucking jacked in this movie. He is huge. He's awesome. He, he, and he does, you know, he's not wearing a shirt and just wearing some jo- some track pants but has like a physical transformation between his character. You know, you're shrink. supposed to do that as an actor as you have like you little shrink. poses and sh- yeah, but he was all over the place, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I but I mean, I, I imagine they were probably were also like, had the makeup artist shading him a ton. And Excuse he did, me? And he did some push-ups. Well, like. there was some <laughs> BTS though. We had some BTS rolling earlier of him just waiting from in between takes. Well, you know, Blaine great. always does push-ups whenever we're and gonna shoot something. And he oils himself. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I have no final verdict. I think that saying it's Terrible is no, is harsh. Yeah, uh, we've been ripping on this movie, we but have. it's not terrible. It's its flaws, I think, are more apparent than its its positive attributes. But mm. I think it does have. Po- I think it is. It does have some cool stuff in it, and it's to not mention James McAvoy's performance, which we have several times, is is unfair. Um, I just it's. I don't think it's the movie anyone that was waiting for for this wanted to no. see. 
Do you see uh, the little uh, MG Mr. Glass mm-hmm. pin? In I, his absolutely tie? Yeah. I absolutely did. I absolutely did. Is that in so Unbreakable? Good. I don't think so. Is yeah. he allowed to make that? His in mom brought it for him. <laughs> his mom brought a pin. His mom who loves his murderous yeah. tendencies. I'm like a glass type. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you wheel around. <laughs> no, I'm I hope, should I push you on the ground? You I'm die. I'm the smartest. <laughs> was he not walking around in Unbreakable? Oh, he, he was. was. He had his cane. But he remember he it was when he fell down the stairs because he was trying to chase the guy into the subway because he thought the guy was a bad guy that he that's when he so couldn't walk anymore. It's crazy because like I have a terrible memory, but I've only seen Unbreakable once when I was 14. Mm-hmm. But I remember so much of it. It's got because it's very it's impactful. Mm-hmm. The movie's. It's great. It's extremely yeah. well made. It takes its time. And it's, this is, it's, jar, it's jarring the difference, honestly. Yeah. Like, and even visually, like you were saying, when it cuts to those unbreakable deleted scenes, the entire style of cinematography is different. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie's very flat. Th- there were a few cool shots. Like, um, you know, he's filming from inside puddles or behind glass. Maybe a few too many security cams. There's glimmers of genius. And I, I, I use that word sparingly, but like when James McAvoy is running like an animal, a beast across that courtyard, I was like, oh shit, that's great. That's pretty cool. That's like straight up like animal beast man stuff to do. And, but then again, you're waiting the whole movie for that to happen and mm-hmm. it does. And that's the sh- only cool example of him in beast form. Well, the, the POV of the police car being flipped was pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think Bruce Willis has seen a final full cut of this movie? Or you think he's seen the theatrical? No, I don't think so either. He yeah, stopped he's seeing his own movies. Premiere, you don't I, think? I don't think he's seen the full no. movie. I think Bruce Willis likes making movies, even though he plays a grump. <laughs> I mean, it, it seemed like while making this movie, he didn't necessarily want to be there. Oh, by the way, I lo- when he's the kid, I forget mm-hmm. the kid's name. Um, Barry or something. No, that's the kind of crazy guy. Oh, tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, when he's talking about turning into the beast while on roller skates, mm-hmm. that made, that mental image made me laugh. Yeah. It's a good oh, joke. so good. Oh, well. Um, Elise, should people go see this movie in movie theaters? I mean, oh, dear. I, I mean, I think you should absolutely watch it at some point, purely for James McAvoy. There's nothing really good out to see, right? There's nothing really in theaters driving you. So unless you're trying to catch up on Oscar movies... You, you could wait on this. Yeah. Say watch it on a plane. It's a great plane movie. Probably a good plane movie, yeah. Um, um <laughs> just the 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 stupid uh restaurant scenes. It's really long. It's just yeah. everything feels overly long. It feels gratuitous. When the movie is over 2 hours, right? It's like mm-hmm. 2 hours and 20 minutes. It's like or too long. 210, yeah. I think. And I'm I like you could there's a hour 45 hour 35 in there that's probably pretty solid <laughs> and that, that's always frustrating when less is more all right so go for jacked james mcavoy and mm-hmm. I, that was cool when the credits rolled and Jack it's McAvoy. like all the characters 20 20 played. character names and just james mcavoy yeah. next to it everyone appreciated thought, his yeah. work on that film um so yeah go see james mcavoy cool. and teen choice <laughs> teen nominee choice, teen choice, choice nominee. villain <laughs> of who won that year did it say i don't think he won oh no I should, I should look it up. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, we were going to maybe talk a little bit about the Oscars, but we've got a full podcast here, so I don't I'll, know. I'll see do, some, do you need I'll something see to some say? More. No, I'll watch. I've seen a lot of the nominees, but I'll watch some more. Yeah, I have a few to see. I need to see Star is Born um, and Green so Book. Fun. I think Green Book is the only one I haven't seen. And Bohemian Roma. Rhapsody. Mm. Unless you watch Roma without me. No, I haven't. <gasps> <gasps> Y'all see Roma. Roma's good. Yeah. Um, so yeah I guess we'll do an Oscars podcast coming up soon Um, but thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next week bye is that a question mark (laughs) (laughs) bye everybody nobody else is excited about Black Panther and I was like I was like I can't wait and I don't know why I was excited about that movie other than the fact that I love origin stories of heroes that I don't know about um, and you wanted to buy the costume too. <laughs> well, that was only. And after you never the movie. freeze. That was only so. after. The movie. I wanted to buy the costume. Bruce after just the wanted movie. to appropriate Wakandan culture. <laughs> um, Captain Marvel, unfortunately, I cannot fit into that costume. 